Served hot or cold with custard or cream, or both, blackberry and apple crumble is a delicious comfort food that satisfies everyone's sweet tooth. A classic favorite that never fails to mark the perfect end to a lovely meal. Winston? Winston? Come back with that leg of lamb. I make no apologies for sharing with you today one of Britain's oldest yet easiest desserts. The good old apple and blackberry crumble with custard. Oh, one of my favourites. Growing up, my mother and grandmother used to cook it all the time and I used to sit there and wait patiently for it to come out of the oven. And we still have it today at home. But first of all, I need to go and pick the blackberries. It's blackberry season and I'm here at Pure Land Farms in McKinney picking one of my favorite fruits. Blackberries are so good for you. They're full of antioxidants, full of vitamin C and taste delicious. I've been picking berries now for about half an hour. Came here this morning really early before it got too hot. I actually brought Winston with me. No idea where he is. He's running around somewhere, probably chasing something. Look at all these gorgeous berries. They're amazing. There's nothing more rewarding than getting up on the morning on a weekend and just going out and picking berries and picking fruit, picking vegetables. It's so quiet and peaceful here. And it is rewarding because you've got the freshest ingredients. Look at those. I've got enough berries here to take back to the kitchen now and make just something amazing. Picking the berries reminds me of being at Balmoral Castle with the Queen. There they had their own gardens and to be able to go into the gardens and pick berries for royal dinner, blackberries, raspberries, strawberries. And we used to have so much fun. All the chefs would go out at night because the Queen suddenly wanted raspberries or a blackberry crumble or something for dinner. And so the chefs would jump on their bicycles and ride down to the garden. And the five of us would just be picking away at berries. After a while, of course, once we got all we needed, it got a little bit excited. And the chefs in their white chef coats would see some of the really overripe berries. And so they'd look for one of the chefs and then they'd throw one of the berries, splat, straight onto their chef coat. We'd have to go back up to the kitchen. We'd be cooking royal dinner. Looked like we'd got bullet hole marks all across the chef coats. <laughs> they were fun times. Winston! Apple crumble is, I think, one of the easiest dishes to make. It's the very first dish I learned to cook. <sighs> it's so easy. You need to get the kids doing it at home. And it's so rewarding to actually go and pick berries and then come back and actually make your own dessert and eat it and share it with the family. Once I've got my blackberries, I've got apples to go with it. I like, I like a combination of the apples and blackberries in there together. And I'll put a few berries into my apples and then just a little sugar as well. Sometimes um, the early part of the year, the berries can be a little bit sharp. So a little sugar in there. And then I like to add some cornstarch too. Once the, the juices start seeping out of the berries in the oven, they start to thicken with the cornstarch. And then finally, vanilla bean paste. I talk about this a lot. It's one of my favorites. There's a link to it in the description if you can't buy it locally. It's so much better than vanilla extract. It smells amazing, but a little vanilla in there too. Now, during the winter months, you can put cinnamon, nutmeg, ginger, anything you want, sort of, you know, really seasonal and spicy in there as well. But summer months, a little vanilla splashed in there with the apples and the blackberries, delicious. Mix them all together, and then we're going to put them into the casserole dish. Crumble is so easy, as I said. Flour, sugar, and unsalted butter. Put the sugar into the flour, and then the butter. 
You want to use softened butter if you can. Doesn't matter if it's a little bit melted. It's better that way than the butter being hard because it takes much longer to rub it all in then. Then you just start the rubbing method, rubbing away, lifting up the flour and then rubbing that fat over your fingers with your thumb. And you're going to rub that all in until you get fine crumbs. Now, when I was cooking at the Savoy Hotel in London, you know, fine dining cooking, we had to make the crumble mix like, like, like breadcrumbs, like a gorgeous sandy beach. And I, I know it's nice with no lumps, but growing up, we always had a more rustic version. And I really enjoy the little nuggets of chunky crumble mix on top of the berries. It gives it more texture. And to create that, you've actually got to keep rubbing in that butter until you get to the crumbs and then you keep going and eventually you get some nuggets. Crumble started, was created I think um, around the war years. You know, over in the UK pies were really popular, especially apple pies and provisions were quite scarce, you know, with the rationing. So to take some fruit from, you know, allotments and things like that and then just mix a little flour, sugar and butter and then sprinkle it over the top. You had a great dessert or pudding, as we say across the pond. You see how I'm rubbing this together until I start to get some lumps in there. There, look at those little nuggets of crumble mix, which are gonna be gorgeous when they come out of the oven. Now, once this is done, we can then lift this onto the crumble. It doesn't have to be completely covered, but just spread it all out so it cooks evenly. There's many, many, many different types of crumbles. I think that, you know, apple crumble is the most popular. My favorite is rhubarb crumble. Over in the UK, people grow it in their gardens. They have some amazing rhubarb, but here in Texas, we just can't get it. It's too warm to grow. The Prince of Wales loves the crumbles too. Pear and banana is his favorite, and I used to make the apple crumble for William and Harry too, and also for the queen on the royal table, for shooting lunches especially. There, once that's done, it goes into the oven, 350 degrees for about 20 to 25 minutes or so, till it's nice and golden on the top and the apples are cooked. Now the English way of serving the crumble is to actually serve it with bird's custard a little of the powder into a bowl, some water to mix it, and then boil some milk, pour it into it, thicken, and then stir in some sugar. Easy to make. I put a link to that in the description too, if you can't get it. Uh, but I'm going to make a creme anglaise that we used to serve to the queen at the palace. Now we start off our creme anglaise with some milk and some cream and we bring that to the boil. I put the recipe in the description below so you can make this at home and whether you make the custard, instructions are on the packet or whether you make the creme anglaise in the description, you'll end up with a gorgeous crumble and custard. For the creme anglaise, we start off with some egg yolks and then into there, some sugar. Whisk the egg yolks and sugar together. If you leave the egg yolks and sugar without whisking it, you end up with a crystallization on the egg yolks. They go really crunchy. You've probably bitten into some custard and it's been sort of crunchy. Almost like a creme brulee, you know, when you bite into that sugar. So, sugar in, stir it. Then, a little bit more of my favorite vanilla bean paste. I just noticed that every time I open the vanilla bean paste, I have to smell it. It's like, it's like picking up a drill and giving it a couple of pulls before you start it. It's just habit. Give it a whisk. Bring the milk and cream to the boil and then it goes into the custard, whisk together and once we've done that it goes back in the pan. I'll show you. The mixture right now is like water so when we pour this back into the pan we turn up the heat and now we're going to stir the custard mix. 
Now when we're stirring, when you're cooking egg, it's starting to cook from the bottom. So there's no point just stirring around and around because it's gonna burn on the bottom. Go backwards and forwards. And what you're doing is just scraping that sort of cooked egg mix from off the bottom. You keep doing this until the mixture changes consistency. It goes from a sort of watery milk consistency to once it's ready and the eggs are cooked to like um, a heavy cream when you pour that. Don't overcook it because scrambled eggs with sugar, they're nasty. It'll only take a few minutes to thicken and so once it does then you can pour it into a bowl. Nothing beats a, a warm crumble straight from the oven with lashings of custard and heavy cream, or both. The apples and the berries are just cooked nice and soft and the, the crumble's nice and golden on the top there. And I spoon into this. Oh, it smells so good. The little nuggets of crumble there. Oh. And then custard or creme anglaise. And maybe a little cream. delicious apple and blackberry crumble hope you've enjoyed the video give me a thumbs up if you did if you haven't subscribed yet then please do hit the subscribe button lots more vids coming up this is so good i'll see you again soon